And uh, last but not least, Professor Eric Hilgendorf will take us to the world of AI. So. Okay, I will use this. So thank you for inviting me. My name is Eric Hildendorf from Germany, and I have the task to give you a um, perspective on the new legal framework for cybersecurity and AI in Europe. Among other things, I'm a member of this new high-level expert group uh, that is going to give uh, advice for regulation uh, of artificial intelligence in, uh, in Europe, and I'm able to give you some insight that has not yet been published. So let's start with some basic uh, uh, background information. There are, in this group, 52 members from industry, academia, and civil society. I'm one of the five or six professors. I'm the only one, only law professor from, from Germany in these groups. And we have two tasks or two deliverables. First, to um, uh, formulate ethic guidelines for artificial intelligence. They have been published already one month ago. And second, we have to formulate policy and investment recommendations. This will be published next week, but I will give you some information on that right now. And um, these papers were not formulated only by these 52 members, but there was also an um, um, uh, um, internet platform, uh, the European AI Alliance, where more or less 5,000 people interacted with these members of the groups. So we started with the first draft in December 2018, and uh, then there was an open consultation, and uh, on April the 8th, the, the first document was published. Uh, it's online now, you can read it, it's in English. Uh, what is specific about this European uh, uh, paper? We, we have chosen a human-centric approach, uh, approach, we call it a human-centric approach, so the idea is um, um, AI and digitization should not be um, uh, uh, of use only for the state, as it is perhaps in China. It should not be only of use for big companies, this may be the case in other countries. It should focus on the needs of human beings. Yeah, the individual should be in the center of artificial intelligence and um, uh, digitization, and the legal framework should see that these individual concerns are, are met. AI is to be a means and not um, an end in itself. We think that there are three components of such an AI. It must be lawful, that means it must comply to the given laws in Europe. It must be ethical, it must comply with the ethical standards in uh, Europe. And it must be technically robust. This means, for example, that aspects of cybersecurity must be uh, considered. And this paper, which was written not primarily by law professors, but also by people from industry, people by the NGOs and so on. This uh, paper um, distinguishes between three levels of abstraction, principles, then uh, certain requirements, and then checklists for practitioners to work on it. So what are the principles? First principle, respect for human autonomy. Second principle, prevention of harm. That was mentioned already. Third principle, fairness, something, uh, an idea that comes from the Anglo-Saxon world, which is not quite compatible to the German uh, 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 perspective. And explicability, it must be clear what these systems are doing. We must be able to understand them, uh, for example, in order to um, have someone, uh, to be able to hold someone liable. Cybersecurity, of course, in such a system has a very important role to play. These principles were reformulated into certain requirements, human agency and oversight, technical robustness and safety, privacy, data governance, transparency, diversity, non-discrimination, fairness, society, societal and environmental well-being, and accountability or liability. And these principles, the relevant legal and ethical aspects 
should be considered. Yeah, we want them to be considered in these aspects, of course. One could go into far more detail, but we don't have much time, and therefore I go uh, on. The second deliverable, which is going to be published next week, um, is a paper that uh, has a task to ensure Europe's competitiveness and policies for trustworthy AI. So the, the industry is um, thinking that um, such an ethical framework for AI could be also good for business. Yeah. The paper is looking at key impacts at enablers and it will be published um, on the 28th of June. And after that, after the summer, we are going to make recommendations for strategic, strategic sectors like fintech, legal tech, medical uh, digitization and so on. So then we go, we'll go on to the details. And again, the role of cyber security is very important. So that's a general overview and now I would like as a as a German a law a, 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 a person, to uh, give you some uh, t two cases which are much discussed today in Europe and in Germany, cases which we think are kind of um, uh, leading cases in, um, in all these discussions. Yeah. First, what is missing in uh, these um, uh, European regulations? We had no analysis and discussions of machine ethics and its problems, so it was not a philosophical uh, thing, it was a legal or ethical uh, thing. Um, we did not try to analyze last ethical foundations of artificial intelligence. That's something um, uh, philosophy professors can do. We did not formulate red lines. This was criticized a lot in the uh, uh, papers in, uh, in Europe and in Germany. For example, we did say nothing about war drones or, or the military in general. Um, and we also did not try to energetically regulate Europe's industry. Uh, it's not a, this paper is not an attack on European industry, it's a kind of framework and it should be open for, um, for industry. Now the cases. Yeah? First case, Aschaffenburg case. Most of you will not know Aschaffenburg. It's a medium-sized town in the southern part of Germany. And they're one of the very first cases involving AI and digitization um, uh, happened. As you know, in Germany, the car industry is quite strong. I think they are in the front runners of this new technology, and therefore this case was a case of um, had to having to do with mobility. A car with a lane-keeping assistant system, a lane-keeping assistant system produced by a German car producer. Um, this car drove into a small village uh, near to Aschaffenburg. Um, it was controlled, it was steered by a 60-year-old person, and this person, this man, um, got, a, got a stroke uh, at the beginning of the, the village and he lost consciousness. He, he unconsciously turned the wheel to the right side and under normal circumstances the car would have come to a stop uh, in some bushes outside the village. But, of course, uh, this uh, lane keeping assistance system of the German producer uh, uh, functioned perfectly and brought the car back on the street. And then the car went on for two kilometers to high velocity inside the village and there it killed a young lady and um, her daughter and the father who was with them could just jump aside and was hurt on the leg. And then the car crashed against the wall, it came back and came to a stop on the other side of the, of the street. The driver who was unconscious all the time barely survived. That's the case, it happened in 2012. And um, from a civil liability perspective uh, in, in Germany, it's not a difficult case because in Germany all the, the holders of the car are liable for everything that comes as a harm out of the use of the car. So the, the holder, in this case identical with the driver, had to pay and there's a mandatory insurance system which means the insurance will pay and then the insurance will see where it can get the money back. So the civil um, side, civil uh, uh, law side was not uh, problematic. The father got the burial costs for his wife and his daughter and he got the doctor the medical costs for his, the healing of his leg. No problem. But of course this man said, I want more. Yeah? I want to know who is to blame. I want to know who is guilty. Yeah? My, my young wife is dead, my daughter is dead. And uh, their criminal, criminal law came in. Now we thought about um, who could be criminally liable in such a case. The driver was more or less a victim, victim himself. Now he did not act negligently or intentionally. He was a victim himself. So the driver is out. The car, well, that's science fiction. Now we 
tend to be conservative in law. Yeah, the, the car is not uh, subject to to punishment. How could you punish a German car? Yeah, by taking gasoline away or putting it in the garage or so on. But the car would not mind probably uh, very much. So the car is out, whatever philosophers might say. But it's a producer. It's like Chris said, uh, it's a producer's liability question. And to make a long story short, it's the, the central question is whether there was negligence on the side of this car producer. Yeah, they, they, they built in this lane keeping assistance system. And uh, uh, had not been there this lane keeping assistance system, this woman and her daughter would not have died. Therefore, there was causality. Everything is given with the exception of um, negligence. And uh, this was where the state prosecutor um, phoned me and asked me, what should we do? Yeah, the very first case uh, that happened. In, uh, uh, and normally we say when, when a harm is foreseeable and avoidable, then negligence is given. And for the car company, cases like this are in principle foreseeable. This could happen. And they are avoidable simply by not uh, building in such a system. So. Um, on, a, on, a, on the very first uh, uh, analysis, one could say the company was liable. On the other hand, the gut feeling, I don't know whether it's the right word, yeah, the, 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 the emotional side says the company should not, be, should not be liable because, as we already heard, there's no technology that's totally safe. Every, always something can happen. And... Um, well, we did discussed it a lot, and the uh, the uh, the company could say they could show they could show that they had uh, uh, looked carefully at the uh, car building industry in other countries, in the U.S., in Japan, in Italy, and they told us that what our, our system was very good. It was up to the standards, maybe even better than the standards of the other countries, and they uh, did everything they could have done to avoid this mistake. And therefore, in the end, the prosecutor said there was no negligence on the side of the producer um, and um, the producer somehow even managed to take this out of the uh, press so there was there were reports about, about a stroke on a street near Aschaffenburg and two death cases but nothing about autonomous systems or artificial intelligence yeah, so nevertheless I think um, this case shows the, the central problem of all the uses of uh, artificial intelligence in cars and other uh, other technology is always about uh, uh, negligence. Who begins the, 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 the duty of care of the producer? No system is 100% perfect, but we want systems to be as perfect as possible. And what is the task of the producer um, in this respect? And this is still an, an open uh, thing, and therefore this case is considered um, a leading case. I, I believe the solution of the prosecutor is okay, but the discussion in, uh, has just uh, begun. And the second case, that's an um, American case, Tay case, most of you will heard about this, Tay, um, 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 self-learning system that um, was able to learn to, to, to communicate, and it learned to communicate by way of talking to People. It used Twitter, but it could also have used a, a normal uh, speech. And the idea was to produce a system that could be used, let's say, in kindergarten or homes for the elderly or some other um, um, areas where it's good to have someone there to, who, is, who is very patient and can talk nicely uh, all the time. Yeah. But what happened? This system was connected with the Internet, of course, and some pe some some people manage to influence or manipulate the system in a way that it turned into a women hater and a racist and it ins terribly insulted people. For example, among other things, it, I think it called President Obama an, an ape or something like that. Yeah? And then Microsoft had to, 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 to take it off the, the net. Now imagine uh, the, the, that in such a case, the system really insults, a, let's say, a young black lady. And she gets a shock. And this would be if it would have done by a human person a criminal act. Yeah? This person would have go, to go to, a, to prison. And second, there would be some cost because there's some healing cost for her. And now consider, um, according to the to legal systems, let's say, of Germany, would there be a possibility to punish anyone in such a case? Uh, only the manipulators could be punished. They had perhaps intent. They caused the situation, they had intent, but we do not know them. All other participants 
producer, the programmer, the, um, the company that used the system, uh, the system itself cannot be held criminally um, uh, liable. This might be a big gap and uh, imagine these systems to be used in all areas of life all the time. This could mean that the, when in a case of malfunctioning of these systems, no one is criminally liable. And it comes even worse also on the civil uh, uh, liability side, so when it comes to, um, to, to pay something for, for, for a harm, even there we have the, the, a, a big problem in holding someone liable because only the manipulators acted with um, uh, intent, intent. All the others probably acted even without negligence. Uh, the producer, in such a case, could argue, I wanted to uh, uh, produce a, a self-learning system, and my system had these functions. It was a perfect self-learning system. Though there was no problem in my system. The system is perfect. I'm not going to, to be held liable in any, any case. Yeah? Even strict liability probably would not be relevant in, in, in such a uh, case. It's more or less like parents who send their child to a kindergarten and in the kindergarten it picks up bad words and then comes back and insults people. And we would not say then that the, the parents could be held liable for such a situation. Uh, it's, 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 it's a problem. And this could mean that in these cases there are huge liability gaps which could be a problem for the acceptability and acceptance of these new uh, artificial intelligence um, uh, system. So I think this is quite interesting. I could talk a lot more about these things, giving you some suggestions. I also wrote a book uh, or some papers on that, but I forgot to bring them, yeah, but, <laughs> but you can look it up uh, if you want to, and uh, everything else we can discuss um, a little bit later. Thank you very much.